busy week for Sledgehammer Games. First, we get the information that Michael Condry and Glenn Schofield are stepping away for executive positions at Activision, to which there's a little bit of speculation right now that's completely irrelevant to the topic at hand today, but maybe to fuel that a little bit of discussion, Michael Condry ends up having a new bio in which it says VP Activision. So maybe he's the new vice president, maybe there are some different roles being thrown about there. But along with that, we ended up getting the announcement that Aaron Halan would be taking over the studio as the studio head. Then we end up getting yesterday the announcement that we'd be getting a brand new update today, which we ended up getting, and that's what we're gonna be breaking down here in this one, because there was a lot of stuff on the table for this in particular that changed a lot about sprint out times, different ADS speeds, different fire rates, all kinds of different stuff that affect a lot of the weapons that we end up using on a regular basis within World War II. So today in this one, we're gonna be breaking down everything you need to know. I got a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons, a lot of before and after comparisons you guys can check out, and hopefully it is something that gives you guys the relative information that you need to know regarding these weapons that you might use on a daily basis once again. So with that said, let's just jump right into it. The first thing, and probably one of the biggest things a lot of people will be talking about either on Twitter, Reddit, YouTube with other creators, all kinds of stuff, and you might notice for yourselves, is the sprint out times. This was something that's been a large piece of discussion in World War II since the very launch of the game. Now, there was some discussion on it about a month to maybe month and a half ago, maybe even two months at this point, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they ended up talking about sprint out times and saying that they had no immediate plans to change any of them, and so therefore, a lot of people were kind of upset, but we had some closure or clarity on that at that moment. However, it's been been since reversed and we didn't get an actual sprint out adjustment for every class, but SMGs did have their sprint out times buffed to which it is quicker to jump right out of sprint and go right into the action. If you take a look at it on a more numerical standpoint, it's not anything that seems like the greatest, but in feel and in actuality, it does feel a lot better compared to what may have been your perception on it, say a week ago. And maybe it is something that's still in the honeymoon phase where it's a little bit more placebo, where you know there's a change, so you feel like there's a lot more, but on the surface, once again, it doesn't seem like all that much numerically, but that feel on how you perceive it is really up to you. Playing around a little bit with it, I did feel a little bit better. It's still definitely nowhere near where, say, Black Ops 2 with dexterity was, but it is something that is better. Now, one thing to bear in mind is, once again, the SMGs are the only things that had the ADS times and sprint out times buffed at their core. We did see a bunch of other different ADS stuff, which we'll showcase here in just a second, such as the rifles, the snipers, and the LMGs, but the SMGs had their base sprint out times adjusted to give the classification that sort of upper hand that SMGs previously afforded in various different other games within the franchise. So it's something that gives the SMGs a little bit more of an SMG feel compared to other weapons, but we don't get to compare sprint out times for the other classifications of weapons. So jumping into those other ADS speeds though, the rifles did have a little bit of a base ADS transition time adjustment here in which there is a slight discrepancy compared to what it was before and compared to where it is now literally just a hundredth of a second difference in which you can maybe notice if you really pay attention to how quickly you ADS. I chose in this background little footage you'll be seeing the M1941 simply because I feel like that might actually even be the easiest to feel and also view the snap effect of the ADS. That weapon's always pretty solid but whenever you have this and time it out once again there's very little difference available to see both with a stopwatch and to your naked eye. The additional overall classification ADS buffs also extend out to the LMGs, to which that's something the LMGs are notorious sometimes for their low movement speed, and of course that ADS is thrown in to that same mix in terms of the slow speeds for it, but unlike the rifles, there at least is more than a one millisecond difference here at this falling in that classification of a four millisecond buff, to which it is ever so slightly quicker, and this is without the use of, once again, say quick draw or the bipod, to which that helps accelerate as well, but if you're just running around with a base LMG, this is now the default in which you'll be able to ADS a little bit quicker, maybe snap onto your enemies and hopefully have a better chance in a gunfight if that's something you're running around for. Personally, if you're like me, you don't use the LMGs all that much unless you're going for headshot challenges for Chrome, but it really comes down to what sort of play style you want to use. Now, the final things that had any sort of change to the ADS speeds were actually two snipers in particular. It wasn't the classification as a whole, but probably the two most used snipers in the game actually had a nerf to them. This being to the Car 98K and the M1903. Both of them adjusted in the same manner, but both receiving a slight increase to the time that it takes to aim down sight 
with those snipers. If you guys remember back to the last Car 98K nerf in which it brought it back up to the M1903, this is actually a very similar scenario because while everybody lost their lids over a very short bit added on to that aim down sight time, and statistically it wasn't anything major, it did feel different. This is a very similar case in that because once again, there's only a two millisecond difference between what it was before and what it is now, but it might seem very different if you guys are accustomed to quick scoping or if that's something you do on a regular basis. But again, a more minuscule adjustment in the grand scheme of actual statistics, but it is something you very well may notice going into games now, jumping in, moving forward. So that said, that is the end for the ADS adjustments. The rest actually just fall down now onto various different weapons. There's seven different weapons that were adjusted individually and that had some various properties tweaked here and there, some more so than others, but stuff that is still relative to the gameplay experience. So let's start with the MP40 because this is one that personally I use all the time, SMGs, especially with this buff to the ADS sprint out times. SMGs are going to be more so dominant than they may have already been already. So the MP40 being a nice addition here to this, feels fitting to start with it. But that said, the MP40 ended up having the recoil buffed in an effort to make it a more competitive SMG, a little bit more on par with the PPSH-41. So, as you can see by the compare and contrast of what the recoil was with the MP40 before compared to what it was now, before there was a degree of randomness to how the recoil pattern would go. It was nothing that you could really predict. Sometimes it would go over to the right, sometimes it'd go straight up, sometimes it'd go 45 degrees. But now with this buff to the recoil, it's a little bit more predictable. It's more so up and down, straight vertical rather than side to side in that sense in which you can now just hold down on your right thumbstick to kind of counterbalance the recoil itself. And of course, if you have grip, that helps to reduce the recoil at its base as is. So those two sorts of things, you can now reduce the recoil a little bit more, but also you can end up predicting it a little bit easier. So it should be easier going into gunfights to control and manage the MP40's recoil. So maybe give that a go. Now as for the FG42, that was the next weapon up on the list here in which that was actually a little bit of a nerf to the fire rate. So the damage output is now a little bit more relative compared to what we end up seeing with other weapons across the rifle classification. If you guys remember the FG42 got a very slight buff to the fire rate and when I say very slight I mean very slight I remember doing the last showcase video in these sort of updates in which it was literally about a two shot difference in about a second so it really came down to the final say five shots of the magazine in which that was when you started to see that difference it's very similar to what it was before I can't for the life of me find the file in which was the FG 42 fire rate two patches ago but it seems very similar in that sense it's a little bit slower compared to what it was just before the previously most recent version so as of yesterday, but it is something in which you now have a little bit of a decrease in that fire rate. So more so kind of leveling out, they're still trying to find that perfect balance of the FG, it seems like, but once again, it's very minuscule in terms of what you'll see now compared to yesterday. So if you use the FG42 a lot, you might be able to notice a little bit of a difference, but not all that much. Now, as for the next weapon, that is the SVT-40, in which this actually got a solid buff to it. It ended up buffing the recoil to make it a little bit more manageable to shoot down at farther distances. And if you guys do recall, actually, as of recently, there was a slight adjustment to this that kind of went under the radar, but it was actually dealing with the iron sights of the SVT. For those that don't know this little discrepancy and issue with it, it actually was something where the actual iron sight crossbar was not actually where you were aiming and where your shot was going. The shot would actually instead go above at the top top portion of the half circle that then enclosed the crossbar for the iron sights. So the actual shot location was much higher than what people were anticipating, and therefore a lot of people really said that the iron sights were broken, to which they kind of were, but it also created a lot of confusion about the weapon itself, and a lot of people were turned off to it. But that's since been fixed. That wasn't a part of this patch, but I just wanted to throw it in there so you guys knew about it a little bit. But as for the other portion of this SVT adjustment, well, it actually nerfed the hip fire, to which it nerfed it potentially into oblivion. You'll see in the background footage that the hip fire footage itself it took a while to get that last target, but this is more so in an effort to match the M1 Garen to decrease the ability to be able to kill players in a close quarters environment. These weapons are more so suited towards that mid to long range engagement as more precise rifles, but with their damage output, if it's not balanced properly, it becomes a little bit too powerful up close. So that hip fire spread was nerfed and it's now a little bit wider, and so therefore your hip fire won't be as good. Now, as for the next weapon, the M1A1 was actually buffed to the fire rates, in which that's something you may notice. And 
I'm all for. We previously had a very strange fire rate cap with the M1A1 that we noticed all the way back in the beta and therefore it was really not the weapon that we recalled from World at War. And it's still not quite to the point that it was at World at War with no fire rate cap and you can spam it into all oblivion, but it is a little bit better. You can notice a difference in terms of how quickly you can get these shots off if you have a fast trigger finger. And of course with rapid fire, it allows that fire rate cap to be increased even higher. So you can really start to do some damage with it, but at its base, it is noticeable and one that I think is a nice adjustment here for it. Now, as for the Gewehr 43, that's the next rifle and the last rifle here up on the chopping block. They actually buff the fire rate once again to this, but the B-roll footage you'll be seeing in the background, it seems like it's relatively on par and maybe even slower compared to the beforehand version, simply because they ended up actually buffing the magazine size as well. Previously, there were only 10 shots per magazine, but now there are 12 in this new updated version of the Gewehr. They also buffed the recoil in which it's closer to that of the M1A1. So take that with what you will, and it's something that maybe now this is more of a viable option than that of what it was compared to say the Garand or the M1A1. They're now relatively all on par with each other, which is definitely nice and gives those semis a little bit more of a fighting chance to be contenders. Now the next and final two things that we want to talk about are the shotguns. The first one being the M30 Luftwaffe drilling. The shotguns have always been a talking point and one of much criticism from the community to Sledgehammer and their way that they've dealt on it simply because we've had a lot of different adjustments to weapon tuning, but not all that much in the sense of the shotguns. They all seem to be relatively weak up until, well, maybe this update. Personally, I haven't played around in game all that much with them to see just how well they rank up compared to previously, but the M30 Luftwaffe drilling starts us off with a buff to the damage per pellet to be on par more so with the sawed off shotgun, but it has a more automatic two shot kill and slightly more forgiving with the one shot kill as well, which means they get a little more damage per shot and you can end up getting off a little bit more compared to what you previously could. Now they also buff the damage of this so that it has a little bit more of a longer range that you can end up killing players with, which was a, once again, a big talking point of the M30 in particular. That was previously criticized for how short the range was. They also buffed the ADS spread to allow for greater accuracy. So you can end up getting a little bit more of a bonus by ADSing instead of just hip firing with the M30. The final thing that we're gonna talk about here today is once again, another shotgun, that being the toggle action. They actually ended up buffing the magazine size or clip size of this as well to be eight shots instead of what it was previously with six. So if you end up coming across people that end up spamming this in game, well, like me, good luck to you because this is gonna be something they have two extra shots to spray at you instead of what they had previously. But for the toggle action users, that is something that is very nice because with the small amount of range and then small window for accuracy as well, six shots didn't really seem like all that much. So to be able to afford two more while playing around, that's something that'll definitely be nice. They also nerfed the ADS spread to be on par with other shotguns. So that's something in which previously you'd have a better advantage of aiming down sight to try and get a little bit more accuracy, but that has now been decreased a little bit. So really you could take your chances, I guess, with this. But ultimately that is the changes here within this most recent update. Once again, there are a lot in terms of different various weapons individually, but also weapon classifications as a whole. The ADS times and sprint out times for SMGs in particular were definitely something that were a nice improvement to the game and something I'm sure a lot of you guys, if you jump on, you'll notice immediately and hopefully lead to a better overall experience as is. But that's where we're gonna wrap it up here with this one. I wanna let you guys see all of the before and after kind of stuff that we had up on the table with this most recent update and hopefully it provided some clarity and maybe some insight into this update in a sense that maybe say just regular patch notes would not be able to. But that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Is there anything in particular out of this update you guys have enjoyed the most? Is there anything you wish would have been adjusted or changed around in any way, shape, or form. Feel free to let me know that down there in the comments as well. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding World War II updates, news, best class setups, tips, tricks, information, all that good stuff. We got you covered here up on the channel. So if any of it interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. Practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram, trying to get a little bit more active over there. So if you guys want to follow me over on that avenue, once again, that link is down there as well. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys all so much for watching. My name is an espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.